Welcome to Zira, the Golden Sting. As far as our opening hand goes, we are... Yeah, we'll keep on this one. I like this. I mean, it's not the most crazy opening hand. But and also, El, El Meister, or El Minster. I didn't realize that, that that card had released. And I've built this card, this commander. And that's where, it, man, it's confusing sometimes with what cards get released on Magic Online and when they do. So anyway, be on the lookout for that <laughs> that commander coming out sometime soon. Didn't realize that came out. Um, so, all right. So, but anyway, that kind of threw me off seeing that El Meister pop up in the command zone. Um, so as far as our, what we want to lead off with, we've got Vampiric Tutor into a black green source for Mana Crypt into three. Yeah, I kind of. Or we could go for uh, some card advantage. Yeah, we'll just kind of see what our opponent's got going on over there. But anyway, welcome to Zira. Sorry that was kind of a, a clunky open right there. It just really threw me for a loop that El Meister or El Minster is, uh, is released on Magic Online. Because last thing I knew, it was not. And that was kind of actually one of the commanders that I really wanted to build uh, from Baldur's Gate. So, But anyway, we're playing Zira, the Golden Sting, Flying and Haste. Do we Vampiric Tutor for Mana Crypt to get into a quick three and dynamo? I think we're okay with that. Let's go for it. Uh, let's crack Wooded Foothills. Let's grab ourselves a black red source. Or actually, green. You know, we need to grab a black source either way. So let's go ahead and grab Overgrown. Let's grab Bayou. Let's grab Bayou. Let's go Vampiric Tutor. And we're going to grab ourselves a Mana Crypt. I want to get ahead on mana on our opponent uh, this game. That's going to be very important to us. So let's go and drop in, um, drop in Mana Crypt. See if this is good. Actually, we'll make our land drop for the turn first. So let's go Forest. Let's go Mana Crypt. See if this is good. That appears to be good. Let's go for... And actually, Awakening Zone is something I kind of want to get down. And then next turn, we can Bloodstain Mire for something and be good to go. So I kind of like that. So anything else, we will pass the turn over uh, to our opponent. But yes, we're playing Zero, And I can't remember I finished it. But basically, whenever Zero attacks, we have Flying in Haste. We get an egg counter on another target creature, not just our opponent's creatures. And when that creature dies, we get to draw a card. So our opponent goes for Frag on uh, Awakening Zone, which is a very good play because that just gives us a uh, one-sided value on our side of the battlefield. So we're gonna choose Tails on this one. Uh, one the flip, we are one for one on those Mana Crypt triggers. And let's go ahead and drop in. So I do want Loth um, to stick around. So let's see if we can't get Zira. I kinda like going for that. So let's go and crack Bloodstained Mire. Uh, let's grab ourselves a, actually we'll go and grab ourselves a red green source that comes into play on tap. Which one? Tiger Uppercut. And let's go for Zira. <laughs> and uh, that's from Street Fighter. If you hear that all the time and you don't know what I'm saying, I'm saying Tiger Uppercut, but I say Tiger. All right, so we get hit with Mana Drain, which is oh, pretty much okay, because I want Loth to stick around at this point. They do get a little bit of extra mana for El Meister or El Minster. And then uh, other than that, we're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. So we're playing against El Minster. That's how I'm going to call it for the rest of the game. So El Minster, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Um, whenever you scry, the next instant or sorcery spell that you cast this turn costs X less to cast or X the number of cards looked at while scrying this way. Plus two, draw a card. Um, then for a minus three, exile the top card of your library. Create a number of 1-1 blue fairy dragon creature tokens with flying uh, equal to that card's mana value. So let's see what they end up tapping out for. That's going to be Lavinia. And number of lands that that player controls. All right, so that's going to stop... Uh, that's going to stop us from going for Loth. Let me make sure each opponent can't cast non-creature spells. And Loth is a non-creature spell. Number of lands that they control. So that's, we got to get an extra land down. And But at least with Urborg, we can get we can go for that. All right, we're going to choose Tails on this one. And you won, we won the flip on... Or excuse me, we lost the flip. And let's drop in Urborg. So we're looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we can't go for both. We can go for Zira and start chipping away at Zira. I mean, Elminster if we wanted to. But we've got a braid and our opponent is basically shields down. So let's go for three and dynamo. It's going to be one, two, three, four. And then let's go for a braid. Deal three damage to target creature. That's going to be Lavinia. That's going to get rid of Lavinia. And that should clear the way for us to have a little bit more mana for next turn. The only downside is that our opponent is going to be open with blue mana for a counter spell. And so we'll see if we can't kind of set this up. Uh, with Fire Covenant, it deals X damage among any number of target creatures. So that is, we can't target a Planeswalker with that. So, but yeah, if we can get Loth down, that's kind of what we're going for. I'm not super thrilled about playing against blue, uh, blue-white control. And then trying to uh, <laughs> kind of be in top deck mode. That doesn't sound like a lot of fun. So if they do go Shields down, we will definitely end up be going for Loth. 
Uh, that way we can get some card advantage going, and uh, then we can kind of go from there. Yeah, because one of the good things about uh, El Meister or El Minster is that there's not really this crazy uh you lose the game ultimate so it can kind of tick up you know that minus three will get annoying after a while but at least we can answer that with a board wipe and uh, hope that nothing bad happens so, all right so we run into vraska and let's go for one two three and then tap down for black because we can actually jam two different planeswalkers let's let's try let's try this yeah let's go loth first or actually, yeah, we'll go. Well, let's go Vraska. Let's try Vraska. We're gonna try that first. That's gonna be one, two. All right, so that does stick. Let's go for Loth. That's gonna be black, and then tap down for three. All right, so that will stick around. So let's go for the plus one. Um, yeah, I think that's gonna be. So we're gonna go plus two, and actually we'll go for the zero ability draw card. Yeah, let's do that. We're gonna draw a card and lose a life. Hornet's Nest. Let's go for the plus two. Uh, do we want to sacrifice a permanent to draw a card and game one? No, we're okay with that. We're just going to tick up on this one. And then uh, anything else, we will pass the turn over to our opponent. So uh, we did cover both commanders. Let's give a quick shout out to our sponsors, TCG Player. If you go to bit.ly slash joltmtg, that will apply my affiliate link. That will allow you to get some cards and help support the channel at the same time. Uh, so if you do use that link, much obliged. I certainly appreciate that. Uh, let's give a quick shout out to MTG or Traders. We're going to play some of the new commanders that have released. El Minster is out there. Didn't know about that. Uh, the brand new... Uh, <laughs> Dominaria commanders are out there, so be sure to hit up MTGO Traders if you want to play Magic Online. And uh, last but not least, I started a Patreon, so if you'd like to directly support cool content like this, there's a link down in the description below. Uh, but if you're keeping score at home, it is officially free time in the ballroom. And if you don't want to make eye contact with Zira and her put an egg counter on you, then you need to... Uh-oh, what happened? Slash the ranks, destroy all creatures and planeswalkers except for commander so that will catch our planeswalker so that is a little bit of a bummer and so but anyway it's a free time to have some fun but yeah stay away from zero she's gonna put a bug counter on you if you make eye contact so we're looking at discarding a card maybe like hornet's nest because i don't really i'm not super worried about that and that would be a really good counter spell for them to go for that yeah let's give that a shot uh, so it's gonna be one two three and let's go big score. Let's go and discard Hornet Nest. See if this is good. All right, so we get some treasure tokens. We get Knight's Whisper. Yeah, I want to kind of crank some card advantage out. Uh, let's go for... Uh-oh. <laughs> We're in our draw step. There we go. All right, let's go Knight's Whisper. <laughs> and uh, let's go for Knight's Whisper. That's going to be one, two, because we can still end up getting down Grist off of that last mana. And we do hit a lane drop for the turn. Let's drop in Grist. Or do we want to end up going for Zira? I think that's good. If we want to end up going yeah we'll just end up going for grist i think we're okay with that let's drop in grist and that way we can go for the plus one get a bug token on the battlefield get a little bit of milling going and then anything else uh we will pass the turn to our opponent so we're still online for fire covenant um with the treasure tokens and with our and the mountain on the battlefield off of that and then next turn uh, with us being able to generate insect tokens we'll be able to get zero down and then uh, hopefully be able to uh, get some card advantage going with these insect tokens if something happens to them. We can always end up going for the minus X on Grist. Let's kind of take a quick look at that. Uh, sacrifice a creature, destroy target creature or planeswalker. And so what we can end up doing with Grist is we end up going for the minus two. We can go for the minus two, sacrifice the insect token. We can get zero down next turn, put a bug counter on the insect token. So we got bugs on bugs and then sacrifice it with Grist and then get rid of Elminster. And then we'll be in a good spot to go. So we'll see what they've got going on their side of the battlefield. If they got another board wipe, Sarah, uh, Sarah Paragon, flying during each of your turns, you may play a land spell from your graveyard or cast a permanent spell with mana value three or less from your graveyard. Um, when this permanent is put in your graveyard from the battlefield, exile it and you gain two life. Our opponent's going to go for Lavinia, which I think at this point. I'm actually okay with Fire Covenant on this one. And so they've only got one. So yeah, let's go for this. I, I'm actually okay with this. So let's go for Fire Covenant. Um, we're going to choose... Uh, so we have to pay X life. We're going to unfortunately miss out on the the damage. But I'm actually really okay with this. Because I, I don't want that repeated effect. So we're going to 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2. And then that should be right. So we're going to click OK. Uh, we're going to go tap down for black. Tap down for red off of mountain all right so that's going to be um exiled they gain two life that goes to the bin 
and then we can still end up going for Zira next turn, and then actually end up going for the minus two. So we're going to choose Tails on this Mana Crypt trigger. One the flip. All right, I'm digging this. And we run into a swamp. So let's get the swamp down. Let's go for Zira. Let's get Zira down. Tapping down for Jun Colors. Uh, tap down for Thran Dynamo. That's going to be one, two, three. And then let's go ahead and swing across. Actually, we're going to swing in at our opponent because we can minus two to get rid of the Planeswalker. There we go. So we're going to be swinging in, put a bug counter on our insect token, knock our opponent down on commander damage. They're going to go to 38. Then we go for the minus two. And we're going to sacrifice a creature. You may sacrifice a creature when you do. So uh, yes, we will sacrifice the insect token. And we're going to destroy Elminster. Uh, we get a bug token out there. Uh, and then we draw into Bitter Blossom. Very nice. So let's go and drop in Bitter Blossom at 21. Yes, we're fine with that. Okay, so we drop in Bitter Blossom and then anything else, pass it to our opponent. All right, so we got rid of Elminster. And uh, they do have to tap out for seven mana to get Elminster back on the battlefield. We did dodge the minus three of getting a lot of tokens out there. And uh, one of the good things with uh, what we've got going on right now is we do have a board wipe. This is very crucial that we have a board wipe against stuff like this. And so whenever you cast a multicolored spell, draw a card. So that is something we do want to keep in, keep in mind. And so, but at least at this point right now uh, with Gris, we do need to tick it up. But if we can get some sort of sack outlet to get these bug counters onto our insect tokens. And look at this insect token. Check that out. <laughs> When you see, uh, when they release this magic token, I just imagine the this being pitched to the art director. And they're like, all right, yeah, cool. Let's go with it. Let's see. And that is a very creepy way to <laughs> portray an insect token. I'm not going to lie. All right, so we get the Mana Crypt trigger. We got Bitter Blossom. Get an extra token onto the battle. So we're going to choose Tails on this Mana Crypt. We won the flip. And we run into Obnixilis. And with Casualty X, I'm going to have to double check that so we're only looking at power one all right so what we'll end up doing is let's go and push in with the crew and we're going to put a bug counter on our fairy rogue token all right so we're gonna knock our opponent down to 34 and then we're gonna go for the plus ability create a bug token uh, we're gonna go for obnixilis with casualty x and i've never cast a casualty commander so i'm i'm making sure that's correct and that's going to be, yeah, we're, we're just cool with the insect token because I, I want to have Zira out there. We could always recast Zira. And we're actually in a good spot with that starting loyalty. All right, so we drop that down. So we go for the each opponent loses two life unless they discard a card. All right, so we're going to go for the plus one. And let's see if this, and let's say we want to discard a card. All right, so we're going to go plus one. All right, so we've got some good stuff moving on our side of the battlefield. We've got Damnation. We activated all of our Planeswalkers. Nothing out of the graveyard. All right, we're going to pass the turn to our opponent. So, uh, But yeah, with Zira, this is Zira Super Friends, as you can tell. Um, we've got a lot of Planeswalkers in here. We do have Doubling Season here, which allows us to kind of amplify the amount of um, you know counters that we can get out of our Planeswalkers. And this is just kind of Jund value stuff. You know, There's going to be times where we get... Uh, zero down and we're putting bug counters on our opponent's creatures there's going to be other times where we get down bitter blossom and we're putting those bug counters on our fairy rogue tokens and there's going to be other times where we put bug counters on across all of our tokens and we go for a value play like damnation and cash in a bunch of card advantage and kind of get a one-sided board wipe so um with our opponent tapping out for elminster and going for all right they just immediately go for the minus three and that, ooh, that was triumphant on top of their library. Ooh, that's uh, that's some good stuff right there. Okay, so that will end up being our Damnation line of play. And they do have flying. So with that flying, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get a buck counter on one of our creatures. And then we're going to... I want to make sure that we've got this set up because we do end up going Damnation. Yeah, we'll be in a good spot with Damnation. So let's see what we draw into. So we're going to have the Bitter Blossom trigger... And we've got Mana Crypt Trigger. We're going to choose Tails on this Mana Crypt Trigger. Lost the flip. Okay, we need to be a little bit careful. And then we go to our draw step, Field of the Dead, um, which we're actually going to wait on that because that's going to give us some extra tokens. So let's go ahead and let's go to our combat step. We're going to have everybody... Yeah, because we can't really get through our opponent. So everybody's going to swing in. And we're going to go ahead and get a bug counter on... One of our insect tokens? Yeah, I like that. There we go. And actually, we probably should have put that bug counter on our fairy rogue token once we go for damnation, because that would have allowed it to stick around after the board wipe. 
unless they block on it. So they do block on it. All right, so it's a little bit of a misplay on my part because if we go to our second main phase, uh, that would have happened. So, but with zero, actually with zero going away, I don't know if we still get that static ability unless they just leave it off to the side. We'll we'll see what's going on. So, all right, so they're going to be swinging in. Uh, we'll deal that damage like that. We get the bug counter going. Click OK. And then we'll return zero back to the command zone. Let's get our triggered abilities on the stack. Uh, we get a card draw, Fabled Passage, and we get Command Tower. Uh, we go to our second main phase, and I think what we want to end up doing is going for... So they have to go for the plus two with Elminster out there, and I think I'm actually okay with that. So let's do this. Let's go for Damnation. That's going to be one, two. And I, th I thought we tapped down for enough on that. Oh, it's going to cost one more with uh, that. That's fine. All right, so it'll cost one more. So we go Damnation. We cleared out. Let's go Field of the Dead. Uh, so we're going to get a zombie token on that. Uh, let's get Zira pop back up. See how much Zira is. Zira is going to end up being eight total mana, which one, two, three, four, five, six. We actually don't have enough. So um, let's get a bug token onto the battlefield. Uh, let's go for the plus one and see if they want to discard some cards or not. And then we'll get for the, there we go. We'll plus up again. So we get for all of our planeswalkers, and once again, zero isn't going to end up being eight. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. All right. So we're simply just going to go ahead and pass the turn. And then next turn, uh, we've got an uh, active field of the dead. So with an active field of the dead, what we're going to be able to do is start swinging in. But we can just drop in Fabled Passage, and then that's going to allow us to uh, start getting some of these extra zombies on the battlefield, which is going to be a nice thing, and especially with Command Tower. And if we can do this thing to where if we can just kind of keep Elminster in check. You know, just swinging in with a one or a two and dropping it down to two to where pretty much they're always just going for the plus two in the scry. We can always get rid of it, of Elminster, but unfortunately it's going to immediately have access to that minus three and then we don't have a board wipe now. So that's something we do want to keep in mind. But, uh, but at least next turn we've got more than enough mana to go for Zira. And uh, the thing we got to watch out for is Mana Crypt and uh, Bitter Blossom. So we do have ways to sacrifice things in our deck. Uh, we have a couple different planeswalkers that care about sacrificing creatures, so or at least sacrificing things. Like we've got the what was that? Those Crush of Tentacles. Return all non-land permanents to their owner's hand if this spell's surge cast was cost. Create an eight-eight octopus. Okay, so we've got some got a good little tempo play on our opponent. I'm digging this back and forth, and so we've still got command. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got seven total mana, and that's going to be eight nine. If we want to end up going for Obnixilis for the casualty, we need, at least need to get some creatures out there. So that 8-8 eight, eight hit is something that we don't really want to happen. That is not going to be good because that really cuts us down very, very low. And so if we get to that 8 hit, they go for the minus 3. Let's see. And they get a lot of creatures. We don't have a board wipe right now, so we need to get that moving. All right, so they do pass the turn. Let's see what we draw into for the turn. That's going to be another Marsh Flats. Um, at the very least, yeah, I still think we end up going Mana Crypt and because uh, we can get Field of the Dead going with this. So let's go Mana Crypt because it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 8 with Zira because that'll at least allow us to grab another another source, I guess. And actually, yeah, think about because we want to get some extra zombies out there. So let's do this. So let's drop in Marsh Flats. Yeah, that'll work. So we drop in Marsh Flats. We're going to get an extra zombie on the battlefield. Uh, let's go for Zira. And this going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, let's go and actually crack Marsh Flats. Uh, not super wild about going down on life total, but hey, we've got to do what we got to do. Uh, let's grab Badlands. Uh, let's get another zombie onto the battlefield. Uh, let's go for Zira, which it will have haste, which is a nice thing. And then we can put one of our egg counters on our zombie and then go from there. So we get down Zira. Uh, let's go and swing in at uh, Elminster. Yeah, because they're only at 6 commander damage. So uh, we're going to be able to get a bug counter on one of our zombie tokens, which we're going to be a chump block on that. And then uh, anything else, pass the turn to our opponent. I guess technically we could drop in Mana Crypt. Uh, but with our life total being at 15, I'm not super wild about that. So we're simply just going to go ahead and pass the turn. And also, we don't really need to go for Bitter Blossom. Uh, anymore because we're gonna have we should have field of the dead for at least one two three a couple more turns to drop in a few more zombies so but with zira this is one of the nice things we get to see what zero is capable of in this game you can see where with zero we're using our planeswalker creatures to get some good value going uh, we can use it in an aggressive manner to where our creatures are swinging in 
Um, our opponent has an octopus token out there. We can use zero to put an egg token on one of our zombies that's going to be a chump blocker for the octopus token. So there's just a lot of different ways in which you can, you know, use these egg counters as not necessarily just sacrifice, you know, getting value from getting rid of your opponent's creatures. You know, you can set it up if we're going a little bit more defensive with uh, what just happened. Opponent just put slash the ranks on top of their library. What was that? Let's see what that is because we kind of need to know what that is. That was slash the ranks. I think that was the... And our opponent might be slash the ranks. Destroy all creatures except... Or destroy all creatures and planeswalkers except for commander. So that'll at least keep zero on the battlefield and we get some card advantage if they end up going for that. And actually our opponent does end up going for the... Uh... <laughs> Uh, the tap down on our zombie token. So we've got a lot of respect on the bug token. So I will see what we can assemble. Our life total is a little low. We need to keep a couple different planeswalkers in check. This is a very interesting game uh, so far. And our opponent decides not to swing in with the octopus token. All right. So let's see what we're working with. So we get the untapped zombie and we run into another swamp. Okay, so we've got Grist, which is going to be a 1-1. One, one. We can go for the minus 2 to destroy a creature from Grist. And we've got Bitter Blossom. I'd really like to cash in some card advantage. And with Grist, we can at least go for the minus 2 to destroy target creature or planeswalker. So let's, let's try this first. They've got open mana and 5 cards in the hand. So let's try to go for Omnixilus first with Casualty X. I think that's good, because then we can go for the minus two. Yeah, let's see if this gets some action from our opponent. And then we're going to sacrifice the zombie token. That way we get a guaranteed card draw. All right, so we get the zero trigger. So we're going to be able to get an extra bug token on the battlefield. And we'll see if this gets any sort of counter magic from our opponent or not. Because I'd really like Gris to stick. That way we can go for the minus two and pop to fairy. I think that'll work out. So we'll see if they've got any sort of uh, response to this. Okay, so we get the bug token on the battlefield, we get Omnixilus onto the battlefield, and let's immediately go for the plus one. Each opponent loses two life unless they um, discard a card, so we're going to go for the plus two. We're going to go plus two, and then with Field of the Dead, and yeah, we've got more than, yeah, we've got enough for that. So let's go ahead and drop in Command Tower. We're going to get an extra zombie on the battlefield. Let's see if this Grist is going to be good or not, uh, and we'll see. Tap down Urborg, tap down one for Badlands. All right, we're gonna go for the minus two. And I think what we'll end up doing is putting a bug counter. Let's do this. All right, so we're gonna put a bug counter because we have flying and that, that does not have reach. And that is not like a mainland. So let's go and swing in because we're gonna be hitting a board wipe next turn. Uh, let's go ahead and swing in at Elminster and let's get the bug token on our zombie excuse me actually our flying token yeah there we go i'm cool with that all right so put the bug token on our bug bugs on bugs y'all uh we got uh, zero swinging it it'll minster it's gonna drop a minster down to minus three which puts them in an ultimate situation or a complete removal uh, let's go for the grist ability uh, let's go ahead and you may sacrifice a creature when you do just start target creature or planeswalker and let's see what this is going to get pat to exile on the insect token okay so that is a very good sequencing by our opponent uh yes we will definitely use that ability because that gives us an additional zombie let's go and drop in forest and then that's going to be another zombie and then we may sacrifice another zombie and i think what we'll end up doing is I know they have the, they brought back that board wipe back to their hand and it's going to get rid of Teferi, but I don't want them to tack, uh, untap with an open Teferi. So we're going to go ahead and pop Teferi on this one. I know it's going to go away with the board wipe, but I just want to make sure they don't get any sort of extra value from it. And that's still going to end up being one, two, three. We've activated our planeswalkers. We could go for three and dynamo, but I think we, we've got the land drop. So anything else, we'll pass the turn over to our opponent. Yeah, that's it. All right, kick it over to our opponent. So if they do end up going for that board wipe, it does keep the Planeswalkers on the battlefield. We'll see what this last little bit is. Uh, it's going to be proliferate on Elminster. Okay, that's a good good action right there to keep Elminster out there unless they go for the minus three. So uh, anything else, uh, pass it to our opponent. So I'm trying to figure out what kind of gets us out of this game. Um, we're kind of in this weird top deck mode where we're trying to get card advantage. And unfortunately, 
um, with blue-white control, that is one of those decks that uh, they are so much better at generating uh, card advantage late into the game. So that is ultimately to where if we're kind of in this... I'm not saying we're not going to lose, but I, I will say if we're getting into, you know, turn 12, this is where blue-white wants to be at turn 12 with a bunch of mana and a bunch of counter spells and a bunch of graveyard recursion. And so pretty much the only thing that we're going to be able to do right now, Supreme Verdict, destroy all creatures. Uh, the spell can't be countered. All right, so it's going to pop all of the creatures. Uh, we will return Zira back to the command zone. And let's get the reveal zone pop back up or the exile zone. I'm pretty sure, yeah, because one of those cards, the board wipe did get returned back to our opponent's hand. So um, the good thing about Zero having haste is when you're tapping out for a ton of mana, I think we're looking at 10 total mana, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we've got enough to tap out for Zira and get a zombie on the battlefield. Um, if we can get to the ultimate, minus 7, target player draws 7 card and loses 7 life. We might end up doing that on ourselves if we can get to that spot. <laughs> That's a really clunky thing to be doing. And that's going to be destroying everything except Elminster. So that gets rid of our Planeswalkers right now. So we knew that was coming. So that's out of the way. And then now we can hopefully... Now if our opponent just goes for the minus three and gets any amount of fairies out there, we just don't really have a lot of action out there. So that's really going to be unfortunate for us. All right, so we run into Blood Pact. And we're at a spot now where we can go for Zira. We'll get a zombie. But I think we need to... I think we need to draw cards. Because we're at zero and we just get a zombie down, we put a bug counter on zombie, and that's all of our mana, and then we pass the turn. Um, yeah, we, let's go blood. Let's go blood pact. We, yeah, we, I need. I mean, zero getting a bug counter is nice, but I'd rather be drawing cards. I know this puts us down below, kind of low. Cathartic pyre, okay. Yeah, let's go cathartic. We're going to draw two cards, discard two. And then we're going to discard at this point. We're going to get rid of, yeah, we don't really want ancient tomb, and... Probably going to get rid of Swamp. All right, there we go. And then we run into Doubling Season and Stomping Ground. Okay. Let's see if Doubling Season is good. If we can somehow amplify the tokens out. I'd, yeah, we'll see if this is good. We'll get down Doubling Season because this puts us in a... They have to have a counter spell to stop Doubling Season because this puts us into ultimate range for a lot of our Planeswalkers. Uh, Swan Song. All right. Yeah, that's... Yeah, nothing we can do about that. All right, so we go ahead and drop in uh, Misty. Uh, that's going to be an extra zombie token out there. And let's go ahead and... Well, actually, we'll hold up on Misty, because that way we can kind of control when we dump a zombie onto the battlefield. And then uh, anything else... We could Bitter Blossom for an extra token out there. And if we're really going to try to complicate this, and we're going to have a Mana Crypt trigger... Yeah, because we drop Mana Crypt, go Bitter Blossom. It gives us some extra tokens for next turn. Yeah, why not? I mean, I'm not I'm not super thrilled about it. I feel like Mana Crypt's really going to kind of mess us over. Possibly. But I, I like getting down Bitter Blossom on this to get some extra. We just need bodies on the battlefield right now because we have Planeswalkers that can sacrifice. If we somehow rip into some stuff, we just... I think it's a risk we need to take because the longer we sit back and we just wait for card advantage, the longer they're going to be able to sit back with just, you know, we spend five mana, they're going to be able to spend one or two mana and then keep the card advantage going. So I know getting down Mana Crypt and Bitter Blossom at 13 does really put a restraint on our life total, but it's, I'd rather be spending our life total to get um, some tokens on the battlefield and hopefully maybe somehow we can sacrifice them, do this, swing in, take care of a Planeswalker, eh, we'll see. All right, so that's going to be Mana Rig. Whenever you cast a multicolored spell. Oh, look at that. I mean, I love that. That's a beautiful art on that. All right, so we got the Mana Crypt trigger. Uh, let's go Bitter Blossom. We're going to get a uh, Fairy Rogue token onto the battlefield. Let's choose Tails on this one. Lost the flip. Oh, no. Drop down to nine. Uh, let's see. Evolution Sage. And yeah, I guess we just go Zira. Yeah, this is going to be Zira time. So let's drop in Fabled Passage. That's going to be an extra zombie on the battlefield. And let's go for Zira. Let's tap down for Jund Colors. There we go. All right, so we get down Zira. Let's go and push in with the crew. And with Elminster out there, I mean, I'd rather... So Fairy Conclave turns into 2 on blue fairy with flying. So we can survive. We can survive. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and... If we end up attack... Yeah, we're just going to attack our opponent's life total on this one. This is kind of boomer bust on this one. We got to do this. All right, so let's go uh, Zira on the uh, bird token. Uh, because if they turn the Fairy Conclave into a 2-1, at least we'll be able to make that trade and get a uh, extra value from that. So, Alright, so we're going to be swinging in. 
Uh, it's going to be 5, that's going to be 7, that's going to drop them down to 17. And then uh, anything else. I guess what we'll do is... We can get down Evolution Sage. Yeah, let's do that. That'll get us down, and either way we'll still survive for next turn. They don't really have any creatures out there, so we, we can still do this. Uh, let's drop in Forest. Let's go for Evolution Sage. It's going to be an additional zombie out there. And then let's go for Evolution Sage. And what we're just trying to do is force them to, I guess, use Elminster Ultimate. We need to get enough bodies out there to where we can do something with this. So let's get down Evolution Sage. And then uh, anything else, pass the turn to our opponent. So we're looking at one for next turn. That drops us down to seven. Uh, we're looking at potentially three from Mana Crypt that drops us down to four. Uh, so the magic number is four right now. If we dip below four, then we're not in a, a very good spot. So we'll see what they're tapping out for. Unfortunately, if our opponent taps out for a draw X spell, where they cash in about 10 or 12 card advantage right now, card draw, uh, we are probably not long for this world. All right, so that's going to be Mana Rig. And actually, let's take a quick look at Mana Rig. So whenever you cast a multicolor spell, create a Power Stone token. It's an artifact with add mana to your mana pool. Then for triple... Triple X, my goodness. Look at the top six cards of your library. Put two of them in your hand, the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Man, that's a... Uh, <laughs> I mean, if when you're playing blue-white control, I mean, that's at the end of a turn, even though that triple X is a lot. That's a lot, but I mean, it's... That's what you're wanting to do in blue-white control before you untap. I mean, if you can look at top X blank cards of your library, you're definitely in a good spot. So, uh, But I love the art on that, because I always love the old-school kind of rigs and stuff all right so let's see what they got going so our opponent goes for the plus two at least in combat damage what do we have for next turn we've got three we've got five we've got seven we've got eight we've got ten we've got twelve and then we've got fifteen so if we rip into one of our voltron pieces we might have the game there's a fairy conclave out there that can block so that's something we do need to keep in mind but it is not likely that we're going to win next turn but it's also not out of the question that we can't win with an alpha swing now if they muddy up the board with creatures it's pretty much good game or if they go for sphinx revelation for 10 that's pretty much good game <laughs> uh, we're still going to play this out we'll see what they assemble i mean they still have to have an answer for what we've got for next turn so they go to 27 um i don't like to scoop to a sphinx revelation but um once they kind of show something we're at turn 14 and I've got more Commander to be recording this morning. And so we'll see what else can happen. But typically in a 1v1 in a blue-white control setting, a Sphinx Revelation is going to be a good game. We'll see what we can top deck into. But uh, like I mentioned, that that is Sphinx Rev into the life game. Because now you're looking at Snapcaster into Sphinx Rev. And yeah, what you, it's going to be rough to get past that. So all right, we'll see what else they've got out there. Uh, they will be tapping down for three, but this, other than that, this has been a very, very fun game. I, I've definitely enjoyed it. So, now we're looking at the minus one. Until your next turn, prevent all damage that will be dealt to and dealt by target permanent and opponent control. So, we're looking at the minus one uh, that's going to be stopped from zero. So, we can at least deal with Dovin out there. And they've got 14 cards in the hand. That's going to be Mana Vault. They have so much mana out there. So much stuff that they can be doing. That's going to be uh, Banner. And we need to get an extra zombie down with Fabled Passage. Reality Chip. Okay, that's going to be a 1-4. That does muddy up us being able to swing in across the bottom. And that's going to be Transmute Artifact. Okay, so Sacrifice an Artifact. When you do, search your library for something. So they crack the Power Stone. Let's see what they grab off of this. And, um, yeah, we'll see what this is. But this game has been a very, very fun game. So I've been very happy with this. So this is going to be Transmute Artifact. Uh, Artifact. Let's see what that is. And this is going to be Mox Tantalite off of Worn Power Stone. Okay, I guess that was just simply a value play. I was thinking they'd get something kind of gnarly off of that. But that's just Mox Tantalite. Let's see what they're tapping out for. And our opponents go, oh, there we are. So we're looking at uh, uh, Genesis Engine can crew it up for eight that's gonna be a multicolor spell that's a tap power stone token oh that is uh that is some good stuff right there and, and you get the mana rig that that is a, a very good thing um so genesis engine draw two cards and discard a card that is <laughs> and they're gonna get a colorless pilot token that's gonna be man this is this is some value engine and on top of that our opponents dumped a lot of this value stuff out they've untapped with 11 cards in their hand too so 
we'll see. It looks like they will end up passing the turn. So let's go Fabled Passage. Uh, we're going to crack that to get an extra zombie on the battlefield. Let's drop in Swamp. That's actually our last basic. And uh, we're going to have the Proliferate ability, but we're not going to proliferate on anything. We're going to click OK because we don't want to give that bonus to our opponents. And, uh, and actually, I think the Proliferate egg counters, I don't think they stack technically. So just giving you a heads up on that. So let's see what we draw into for the turn. We do need to hit some good stuff. We'll see what they end up discarding. So there's Ancient Tomb. <laughs> If they start dropping like board wipe, board wipe, board wipe, then we're like, okay, yeah, we, we know what's going on in there. Okay, so they get rid of Seagate, draw cards, and land, land. Yeah, so they got some good stuff in there. All right, we get to the Bitter Blossom trigger. Uh, that will drop us down to seven for sure. Let's see if we hit on this Mana Crypt trigger. Uh, choose Tails, that does drop us down to four, unfortunately. And let's see what we draw into. We draw into Generous Patron. Okay, when you put one or more counters on a creature you don't control, you draw a card. So, I mean, that gives us something. So, we drop in... Drop in Jenner's Patron. That way we can swing in with Zira. We're going to support for two. So, whenever you put one or more counters on creatures you don't control, you draw... I guess we just do that. And that should be two card draw. I think that's something we do want. Let's see what this last ability is. They're going to go Path to Exile. Oh, that's a bummer on that one. So we... <laughs> dang it, that's a bummer. That's a bummer. That's a bummer. Good play by our opponent. So they just get the straight gas value off of that. <laughs> that generous patron. Um, let's drop in an extra zombie. Uh, not going to pay two life on this one. And then we're going to get the Proliferate, which we... We'll go and Proliferate on the... I guess the bird token. Click OK. That's two egg counters. And we get an extra zombie out there. And we can't swing in with lethal. We just unpass the turn. I guess technically we just deploy out three and dynamo. I, I, we'll see what they assemble for next turn because technically we have one more untap step. So we'll go for three and dynamo. Get that down and then uh, we've got nothing else that we can be doing. So we'll just go and tap down. See what sort of win condition they have for next turn. Click OK. And then uh, tap down for three and dynamo. I mean, because if we swing in right now, we they maybe block. We get we at least need to get rid of Dovin, I guess, so they don't go for that next turn. So we'll send in, swing in at Dovin, and actually we can do this. We'll back off because none of those have flying. We can go flying at Dovin, flying at Dovin, and then yeah, we'll just send all of these in at Dovin. Because they can block on the ground with that one. Block on the ground. And that'll be an extra Dovin for next turn. And that should get rid of Dovin. Alright, so we're going to click OK. Alright, so we got the token swinging in. We still have some blockers holding back. And I guess we should have swung Zira in just to get some, some sort of incremental value from our opponent. But we're tapped out. No cards in hand. So we're simply going to pass the turn over to our opponent. Um, if they've got any sort of... Yeah, I guess we'll, we'll still see what we draw into for the turn. So... And what I'm going to do, this has been a long game because we're looking at 40 minutes that I've been recording in this game alone and talking. So I'm going to let them kind of cycle through this turn and then I'll jump into commentary uh, if something major happens. All right, so our opponent goes for uh, Lux and gets Lux onto Elminster, which is a very beautiful sight to see. And is that, yeah, we can still just straight up just block on that one. So we'll toss, um, toss a fairy rogue token. Actually, we might need that flying, so we'll toss a zombie token in front of it. And then, I think that was the only... Yeah, this should be the only creature flying. Alright, so that's just a 2 damage. It still keeps us at 5. And we'll see what else they got. Okay, so let's go to our draw step. We've got Mana Crypt, we've got Bitter Blossom. Let's see what this is. We've got the Bitter Blossom trigger on the stack. Go down to 4. we got Mana Crypt. Let's choose Tails on this one. Come on, Mana Crypt. Lost the flip. We go down to 1. And let's see what it is. We have a Heroic Intervention. And I guess we... Just really need to leave up, like, because this one, crew for eight, and it's just an eight, eight. I guess we just start pushing in, and then we can, because we need to leave up at least three creatures blocking, because that's going to be a fairy conclave that we can still go for. Swing in, swing in, swing in, and that we need to, actually, no, 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 we need to, ha yeah, we do have one flying blocker back on fairy rogue token. That's going to be one, two, three on the ground. That's three zombies, four for extra just in case. Yeah, we'll go and push in on this one. All right, so we'll go and get a bug token onto, 
I guess, fairy rogue token? Or actually, we'll put it on one of our zombie tokens. Yeah, okay, there we go. So we'll click OK on that one. And we don't have Keswick Wolf Run right now. We do not, know. All right, so see what our opponent's tapping out for. So we still have Heroic Intervention. All right, they're going to be able to create a human token with that. That's simply just going to be a 1-1. One, one. And it's going to turn into a 2-1 Flyer. It's going to be Fairy Conclave on Zira, which is going to get rid of Fairy Conclave. So we will be able to swing in. And then we'll turn Zira back to the Command Zone, which we can always just recast Zira. And then, and actually, unfortunately, next turn, unless we just gain some life, we're going to technically lose to Bitter Blossom. <laughs> but we'll still get Zira down, just to kind of see what's going on. And then that'll be one, two, three. Uh, yeah, we're going to end up losing to Bitter Blossom either way. Uh, next turn, but we'll get that down and then uh, anything else. Maybe, somehow, the, the zombie token. I don't know, maybe we gain life. Maybe our opponent messes up somehow, but we'll see. Uh, but this should be a good game, so we'll, we'll go and let them uh, go through this turn and we'll see what's happening. So if they do swing in with anybody... Alright, so they decide not to swing in. They they go for the line of play, so um, I think that is going to be it. So let's see. Let's go. Yeah, good game to our opponent on this one. Good game. Enjoyed it. Yeah, because even if we, because the only thing we were kind of hoping for is that zombie token, and uh, I was hoping for that zombie token, but unfortunately, uh, they're going to be able to get it on this one, so uh, once we get that bitter blossom, let's see what we're ripping into. Yeah, we would have just hit a few more lands, that really wouldn't have done much, so but anyway, good game to our opponent, I enjoyed that, we got to see what Zira is capable of, we really put this deck through the ropes, um, you know, just kind of super friend planeswalker, unfortunately when you get to turn 10... Uh, that's where blue-white control is really gonna really gonna shine so uh, but anyways if you enjoyed the video hey like and subscribe thanks bye